Hello, Aqua here again. This is the second video in the factorization route and um, Tesseract sorting system. Um, this is going to be another short video because I've not really done much on this system. Uh, I've been a bit occupied doing other stuff. So, this is the same setup that I showed you in the other factory. Um, I've now got a Tesseract and I just named it Sort Barrel in for now. And I've got one there, sort barrel overflow. That one's set to send. This one's set to receive. I've got my router there. Uh, insert into top sides, visit barrels, and bandwidth. Um, one thing I've noticed is this Tesseract needs to be set to have the redstone control disabled, otherwise, the redstone signal here turns it off and stops things happening which confused me for a while so as you can see that's going to all be once I've fine tuned the state cell and the timer once I get the system up and running properly this can be hidden behind the aluminium blocks and all you'll see is the wall of barrels um, I'll just set this at the minute this is the tesseract that sends to sort barrel in and this is a tesseract that receives the overflow. So it's just so I can test things. See when I uh, throw items in there. Now this texture pack makes barrels look nice, but the color, of the number, blends in totally with the barrels, which is a real pain in the ass. Um, when you put the interdimensional upgrades on, which a lot of these barrels will have, it puts a black plate on the front and you can actually see the number right, but while the numbers, while the barrel's standard, it's really hard to see. So you can't really see what's in there, but they've got some steel, uh, sorry, silver. So that silver went in through there and got put back, so it's back to 25. So that's working. And, um, overflow works. If I grab something that's not got a barrel, such as these empty cells, they go in there. You can see the overflow kicks in. And then there's two stacks back in there, so they came back to there. So that's all working uh, as it's meant to be. So the next bit would be to get an input from my uh, quarries. That's going to go into a red power sorting machine, and will that'll sort things that need to go to either the blast furnaces or the grinder or whatever. I'm going to try and do all my processing via. Greg Tech stuff just because I've got a ridiculous amount of power now so I can just start making extra machines. I've got three blast furnaces there. I've got a grinder with a grinder on all four sides and stuff so I'm going to just for the sake of doing it I'm going to do it totally through Greg Tech the R processing. Um, so the sorting system will send obviously all, all blocks to the grinder to get ground into dusts and tiny dusts. The dusts will go to the Blast furnaces, the tiny dust is going to get made into dust. I'm going to, have to make a little system using a factorization packager to make them into dust, and then they'll go into the blast furnaces. And then they'll come back into the sorting system, go through a second run of the sorting system as an ingot, and the ingots will get put into this system, they get put into the barrels, and then other stuff will get put straight into here. So it should all work pretty well. And the other thing I want to show you in this video is. The factorization routers need something called a logic matrix. Now this is a little setup how you make logic matrices. If you look at the router upgrades, the machine filter and the item filter both need this thing called a logic matrix identifier. So I just wanted to show you real quick a little setup how we make them. Um, you need this guy here, which I forgot the name of. Um, let's just filter that down to factorization only. And I believe we've got solar turbine, that's what I was looking for. That's just glass, a motor, and a fan. A fan is just iron. The motor. A little bit more complicated. It's a magnet which uses lead wire, 
which is just lead. Um, it was a battery block, which is some more lead wire. And another battery block. I don't get how that's working. Okay, and the battery block. Oh, okay, that's different different levels of charge, I believe. Is uh, iron lead. Sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, bit of gunpowder, bit of coal. And water or sulfur. So it takes a little bit of making. So that gets you your solar turbine. Your solar turbine needs to sit in a, a water source. So there's three blocks of water there. So obviously the, the middle one's an everlasting water source. So that sits in there. Then you need these solar mirrors. Now it seems three is enough for this. Maybe maybe less is enough. Solar mirrors are pretty straightforward. Where are they on here? Um, do, 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 do. I don't see them anywhere. This is not called solar mirrors. Reflective mirrors, that's why I cannot find them. Reflective mirrors is silver on the glass plane, so that's pretty straightforward. There's three of them there. And then you need this thing, which is called a furnace heater. And that's some of these insulated coils, which I believe I forgot to show you. It was there was in the recipe for the solar turbine as well. She just laid her on the clay block. And a bit of lead. That gets you that bit. And then this thing is called a crystallizer. Let's do that again. Crystallizer. That's just a stick, a bit of string, and a cauldron. Again, pretty straightforward cauldron, vanilla item, just iron ingots. And what you can see in there is this takes 20 minutes to make each one. It uses the water bottle stays there, you only need one, that doesn't get consumed. You need some stone in the top. You need things called invarium drops. And they're lead, gold, a diamond. So you need one stone, one invarium drop for each logic logic matrix. And it's it takes 20 minutes, it's quite cool. You see the uh, you see the thing growing over the 20 minutes if you want to sit, sit and watch it. And once it's complete, it pops the logic matrix out. So you see this one's about halfway, this next one's about halfway through, about 10 minutes in. And once you've got the logic matrix, got a project table here with a um, plan in there. Logic matrix goes there, you need a spider eye, and you need one of these logic matrix programmers that you'll get from a dungeon. This doesn't have any durability, so you only you need one of them. And that makes you your logic matrix identifier. So to go back to the start of why we need that. Item filler upgrade needs one and machine filler upgrade needs one. So you're gonna want one of these setups. I'm gonna stick a stack in there, get myself a stack of these made because I'm gonna be making the same way and say the plan for the system down in the factory there is gonna be, I'm gonna try and make it entirely wireless using tesseracts and routers. Just uh, entirely tubeless, should I say. Um, it might not work, I might have to put some tubes in. But I'm going to see how it goes. So thanks for watching. Hope that was informative and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.